I thought we'd just start with, with one word, which I think is really um, important uh, in terms of the way that they've named the exhibition, and that is India's fabled city. I love this word, fable. Um, it, 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 it conjures up ideas of storytelling and magic and mythology, and I think that's exactly what Bollywood does um, in its filmmaking techniques and, and, and in the way that it tries to capture the imagination not only of Indians, but people all over the world. So anyway, here we are at Lakma. And, and here we go to, to uh, the subcontinent of South Asia. This star indicates uh, Lucknow. So where, where it's located, I think, says a lot about what happened uh, in this amazing city. Um, you have the, the, the Ganges River very close to the city itself. And then 200 miles to the west is New Delhi, which was really the home of the Mughal Empire in the 1500s. And so while this was kind of the center of culture from 1500s onwards for, for South Asia, Lucknow kind of resided in the middle of that dying empire and the rising empire in the, in the east, which is down here in Calcutta on the far right. Um, Calcutta, of course, was the home of the British Empire. And so from the 1500s onwards uh, to about 1858, when Lucknow was actually attacked by the British and, and demolished, um, it served as the center point between these two cultures. The Mughal Empire that was kind of fading and was really, re really represented the convergence of Persian culture and, and a lot of, of the existing Hindu culture in the region. And then what was happening in the, in the East with the British Empire coming in and asserting dominance. And so its very, physical, very physicality represents the idea that it converged a lot of different ideas. And in the courts of the of the, the rulers of Lucknow, we had this incredibly rich atmosphere for music, arts, dance, poetry, and that is really what has captured the imagination of, of Bollywood. It was a city that, like Rome, represented the highest in civilization, culture, architecture, music, poetry, and dance. Instead of it being a pure uh, reflection of the existing Mughal Empire, it was more of a hybrid artistic environment. And so you had the blending of Islamic influences, you had the blending of Hindu uh, dance and art forms coming together in the courts of the existing rulers in Lucknow. And, but what we see in this film is a lot of things. You see Umrao Jan entering a, an atmosphere, a room, where she's surrounded by a lot of different people. Now, who are these people? There's landowners, there's, there's gentry, there's actually um, the, the Nawab of the local kingdom may have been there to, to come and see. And this is a, a world that's called the Kota, which is essentially um, where the courtesans who were able to speak poetry, dance, and, and, and really share their cultural gifts with the nobility, um, were able to do that in this environment. And so in the Kota, you see Umrah Jan presenting just very simple poetic lines. And these are couplets that are presented in guzzle form. But here she's dancing and singing. And so as a, as a courtesan, she's there to, uh, to, to share these artistic forms and, and herself with the nobility. But what we're kind of missing here, and I think in some ways what Bollywood has kind of chosen not to look at and is one of the things that is difficult to examine is the actual double life and the double standard that the courtesan had to, to, to live. And that's actually the, at the core of the narrative of Umrah Jan. Uh, she's a character that is at once uh, praised by all of the people around her, but because of her role as a courtesan, as someone that has to give her body to um, the nobility and, and is really not in control of her life, she, is, she has no self-dignity in that way. So with that, what I'd like to do is also kind of focus in a little bit on the music. Um, I have two images up here. One is of the pakawaj, and one is of tabla. Tabla is this instrument that you see here. Before you know, the, this instrument kind of developed the way it is now, it was centered around this drum called the pakawaj, which, which was a drum that was made of a single piece of wood. And over time, uh, different innovations led to the instrument to be broken in, into two. And in, in Delhi, in the 1500s, um, during the height of the Mughal Empire, really, tabla was flourishing in that particular city. A very sophisticated language between the dancer and the drummer developed in the courts of Lucknow. This instrument, it, it features a, a, an amazing vocabulary. Basically, every note on the drum can be uh, vocalized. So if I play this, 
That would be na nake na nake tum. Na nake na nake tum. Or na ti na ti tum. Na ti na ti tum. Na ti na ti tum. Different types of strokes on the drum can be um, vocalized. So if a dancer and a tabla player are working together, they can actually talk to one another. And, and then they can actually play those notes on their feet or on the drums. And so if, for example, I was to recite a composition from the courts of luck. Now, this is an actual traditional uh, composition. It would go something like this. Da 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 ki ta taka di ki ta taka. Da 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 ki ta taka di ki ta taka. Da 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 ki ta taka di ki ta taka. And that sounds like this. So these different phrases, um, and these are poetic phrases. They have a lot of life, and the way that they're recited. Um, would be mirrored by the dancers. And this would create this atmosphere that you see captured in these Bollywood films to such a um, level that I think it, it became uh, known all over northern India that Lucknow was the place where this kind of uh, amazing confluence of culture was coming together. And the courtesans would have to be versed in the language uh, that I'm speaking. They'd have to know the different compositions. And they would have to be able to recite poetry that fit those rhythmic ideas. Uh, that's an important part of Lucknowi culture is that so, for so many years, these instruments and the language that I'm speaking was closed off to the rest of the world. You had to be of nobility to even be able to, to see it. Um, and so in many ways, what Bollywood has done is democratized that culture and brought it to the wider audience. People were able to see, wow, this is how the people of the elite levels of society lived. And that is what has captured the imagination of people and why Lucknow continues to just be portrayed in lots of different contexts in Bollywood. In 18th and 19th century, you know, there was a uh, real focus of this culture in northern India, and but it also paralleled in other parts of India. It was not just in Lucknow. And it was really supported by the patronage of the Muslim nobles. And in return, uh, the courtesans were responsible for preserving arts, letters, and the manners of the area. Uh, in those days, before um, as I mentioned, the British came in and really started to demolish this culture. They were financially and sexually independent. They could, some of them could each even own property. So they had a very high level of respect in society. But it wasn't until basically the uh, British arrived that their status and position in society started to decline. And there was this anti-Nach movement which came about as a result of uh, missionaries coming to India with the British who basically portrayed the courtesans and tawaifs as prostitutes. And so instead of a kota, it became known as a brothel. And so in many ways, that perception led to the demise of this culture. And now the real only place that this thing, that this kind of culture exists is in the imagination of Bollywood. This, in fact, is, a, is an image of, of some propaganda that the, uh, the, the, the missionaries would would, would be sharing with people locally to say that the kotas are bad. You know, the women in there um, who do this and who have all this cultural knowledge, they're actually prostitutes and they should, they should be avoided. All the films that we see in Bollywood are really being made, many of them are made after 1947, which was the independence of India. Uh, India went through an incredibly difficult time uh, when the British left uh, because they left India divided between Pakistan and India which led to a very brutal uh, and very um, bloody uh, partition, a partitioning of the country into two parts. The people who were Muslim were told to, that their homeland was in Pakistan, and those people who lived in what is now currently Pakistan were told, if you were Hindu, that you should move back to India. And so this migration of people led to almost two million people being killed. Um, so Bollywood comes out after the British leave, really. And the government of India had a lot to do with funding those early Bollywood films, because here we are now, after 1947, finally the British have left, and India wants to assert itself as a nation state. And so for that period of time after the British left, they, the government was very interested in portraying India as a unified whole. And one of the best ways to do that was to show that, hey, even though the Muslim people have, many of them have left for Pakistan, they are not bad people. They are people that have had a lot to do with building our country and our nation state, and we should celebrate them. And so what did Bollywood directors do? They looked at Lucknow. They looked at Lucknow to say, look how amazing the culture was there. Look at how 
benevolent and amazing these rulers were. They combined Hindu art and Muslim art and created amazing dance forms. Look at the architectural um, monuments. The first prime minister of India, Nehru, was very interested in, in having this post-partition vision of plurality, that India can survive uh, as a whole with both Muslim and Hindus. And, and Mahatma Gandhi was also very keen on that message, um, that India shouldn't be divided and its people should work together. Um, and so, so that kind of had a lot to do with the way that Lucknow has been taken advantage of in terms of its culture in the portrayal of a political kind of message from, uh, from Bollywood. Mm -hmm.